and preach. In the epistles, we see him explained. And in Revelation, we see him expected. Okay, I hope, I hope, no? You are as, as excited as I am as we go through this journey together. So let me start with a video explaining about what we are going to be embarking on tonight. And I hope and I pray that everyone here will be sticking with us all throughout this series up until the very end. So without further ado, here's the Gospel Project. Mm -hmm. Oh, nga. Mali. Wait lang, ha. Umpisa <laughs> tayo. 66 books. Dozens of authors. A holy canon thousands of years in the making. Consider the works, accounts of history and law, prophecy and poetry, verses of wisdom and letters from friends. Now, look again. What do you see? Behind the fallen creation, where the first son Adam led all humanity astray, there is the faithful son, a new Adam, who fulfills the promise and crushes the serpent's head. In the waters of the flood, just as God used Noah to save his family from judgment, there is a greater vessel by which all God's children are saved. On the altar of desperation, just as Isaac asked his father, where is the lamb for the sacrifice, comes the answer from the wilderness, behold the lamb. For a thirsty people, just as Moses struck the rock in the wilderness, there is a rock whose living water satisfies forever. In the battle against Goliath, where an unlikely king became a champion for his people, we see the shadow of a greater king who defeats sin and death to claim our victory. In the long exile of a people, Isaiah's eyes were opened to a vision of salvation and the eternal journey of God's people to the Promised Land. Until finally, in humble manger lay the hope of the world, the King who reigns from a throne of straw to Calvary's cross to the deathless tomb of eternal Easter. Every story casts his shadow, every word Every verse bears his testimony. The Holy Messiah, Jesus Christ, eternal King. This is the Gospel Project. Hey, maganda ba? So, before we start, ilang ba tayo dito? 33. Let's do a short activity, okay? So let's explore our inner child for a moment before, because I want us to look at today's topic and, and, and the rest of the Bible series with, with childlike awe and wonder. No? So we'll, we'll do an activity before we really start, and it's called, we'll call it Instant Recipes. So ang gagawin natin ngayon uh, is, I hope everybody will participate, no? So what, what we're going to do ngayon is bibigyan ko kayo ng two dishes. No? Like say, adobong manok. Parang ganyan. Ang gagawin nyo, huhulaan nyo kung ano yung ingredients niya. Okay? Lilistahin nyo kung ano yung tingin nyo ang kakailanganin para gawin yung dish na yan. So, okay? Any questions? When we're going to have a, a very short three-minute uh, breakout room. Okay ba? So we'll, we'll divide the group into, I think, four, no? Four groups. Uh, anong, anong gusto nyo? I, I, we have two dishes, no? So I, I, ilang minutes kailangan nyo? Three, three minutes or five minutes? May pumapasok ka. Papasok. Four individual ba muna? Ano po? 
individual muna isusulat yung ano. Be, uh, as a group na lang para mabilis tayo. So, Ayan. Okay. Mag, uh, ano, three, minutes, okay. three minutes lang. Marunong magaling, mar maraming magaling magluto. Ina, dito. Dalawang disto ha. Dalawang disto. Parmi sa lulutuin. Parmi sa lulutuin. Ina talaga o. Oh. <laughs> One minute nga lang. Kaya ni Tita Susan yan. Eh. Ah, Pan sa it malamon. <laughs> Parang nilaga lang yan. Uh, kahit uh, walang sa minuto, pwede. O ano, 3 minutes lang. 3 minutes. 3 minutes. 3 minutes lang. 3 minutes. 3 minutes, ha? Aa. Okay. Yeah. Oh, these are the dishes. Ay, sandali, sandali. Pero kaya kasi so, sulat. Uh, honesty system tayo, ha? Walang mag- Oo, paano isusulat? Bahala na kayo. <laughs> Ay, hindi. Hindi, hindi. Hindi, hindi. Hindi, hindi. Hindi, hindi. Hindi, hindi. Oo, mamaya. Pakita nyo yung sinulat nyo. Kung pwede. Ha? Huh? So, sulat nyo sa papel, mamaya pakita nyo na lang. Okay. 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 Three minutes, ha? Sure kayo? Three minutes? Kaya yan? Tatlong dish to. Tatlo? Hindi. Three minutes. Dalawa lang. Three minutes. Old-fashioned bips to. Walang mag-google, ha? No. Oo. Sister, ha? Dosti. Love na. Ready na. Ang passion bits to be kay Caldereta yan. Oh, game na, game na, game. Oh, as a breakout room. Ayan na. Ay, ano ba to? Bakit? Ano nangyari? Ano nangyari? Ano nangyari? Sa ano nga? Paano nga ito? <laughs> Ba't ayaw? I'll do it again. Pag-alik sa 
hawik na ang bawat piraso ng damo. Nalubo ko na ang langit at lupa ang mga sawawa ng kapiraso ng aking bibig. Ibuto na kumpleto sa balakas ng imali ng pag-ibig. Hello? Welcome back. Wala pa yung iba. Sinasagad nila yung ano, oh. yung two minutes to Oh my Dinagdag ko lang yung iba. Okay. Tamo, kayang kaya ng one minute. Sabi ko sa inyo. <laughs> kayang kaya ng one minute eh. One okay. minute kayo? <laughs> Oo. <laughs> Nagkwentuhan na nga kami. Dami na nga namin pinagkwento oh, kami. Ma- <laughs> 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 nasa na, nasa na, namin yung mga master chef. Na Nakwento na nga ni Don yung buhay niya eh. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> oh, nandito na ba lahat? Ilan ba tayo? <laughs> oh, sobra yung 3 minutes, Paul. Sobra ba? Oh, di ba? Oh, oh. Ayong... Eh, Huwag niyo ang ilahat. Yung iba, hirap na hirap eh. Iba, Ruby. Kayang-kaya <laughs> <laughs> raw. Parang hindi na bumalik yung iba. Kumain na. Kumain na. Kumain na. Kumain na. Mga nagluluto pa. Nagluluto pa eh. Nagluluto pa yan. Hinihintay niya mag-close. Passion daw. Diba si Nagata Pajik sarap. Wala ata magic sarap ang old fashion. Wala ata magic sarap. 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 Wala Bago natin pakita yung sagot, can anyone share? Yung... Share kami yan. Share kami. Go. Pero show me share screen. Share screen. Sa share screen mo? Oo, kasi pinowerpoint namin. Wow. Kanino? Sa mabilis. Bang klase? Akin, Susan. Oh, PowerPoint pa yan. Hindi competitive yung klase. Kinarir. <laughs> Picture pa yan. <laughs> Grabe naman, no? Picture? Pangal, ano lang? Baka may video pa yan. Uh, <laughs> Ayan, pulang na lang dyan, kakaya. Uh, okay, Tita Susan. Ayan, okay. Nagkikita nyo? Yes. Oh, yan. Teka muna. Yung magic sarap. Jumble-jumble na. Yung magic sarap. Ayan. Okay, diba? Move here. Yung call slow. Ayan ang coleslaw. Cabbage, onion, carrots, mayonnaise, egg, salt. Yan lang ang alam namin, di ba? Yan lang. Pepper. Okay. Hindi kasi ako nakain. Yan. Magic sarap. Deep stew. Alam na rin itong baka. Lagyan ang magic sarap. Deep water, potato, tomato, garlic. Old fashioned. Wala po na po. Magic sarap. Wala. Masarap, bago lang. Okay, bye. Meron pa? Similar. Except for the coleslaw, may dagdag kami na raisins, pineapple, and pineapple. So, mas masarap yung coleslaw namin. Yes. Special. Special sa amin, regular lang eh. Ano yan ah, Wendy's hamburger version. Wala, online. Wala mo magic sarap yun. Wala, wala, wala. We hate it. Saka nila, special sa amin, regular lang. Access kasi yun na coleslaw, Max. Timpla yun. Oh, sige, pakita na natin para ano, kasi tatak. Para di tayo tumagal dito. Grace? Yeah, wait lang ha. Okay. May apple cider pala yan. <laughs> Ayan, that's the Ayan recipe. For coleslaw. Ang dami ano, naman. Ah, oh, walang sugar. Ah. May sugar ba? Lemon juice. May milk. So, may sugar, may salt, white pepper, whole milk. White vinegar, lemon juice. 
<laughs> Kaya pala walang lasa sa amin. Water. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, next. Next. Oh, next. Beef stew. Beef American stew. coleslaw. Ah, <laughs> Pepper, beef stewing meat, vegetable oil, red wine. Oh, red wine. Red wine. Red American style. Filipino style. So tama pala yung sabi ko kanito yung Baileys. Okay na tayo. Okay na tayo. 1, Walang magic sarap talaga. Tita Susan, kung sino yung mananalo, siya ang mag... Siya ang magpe-present ngayong gabi. Tita Susan. Ba yung beef broth? Pwede na yan? Parang bandit sarap na yan? Kaya na lang. Okay. Tama na. Let's proceed. Hope you had fun. Okay. So, anong ginawa natin? What we did is we attempted to to create something from a bunch of ingredients. Diba? Ginag ginagamit natin yung word na create whenever we cause something to come into being. In this case, diba? Uh, uh, cos coslo and beef stew or whatever it is. Uh, we always form something out of other things that previously existed. No? So just like we, we create music, using notes uh, or, or we create art out of paints. Diba, Tita Bell? And just like how, how books came into uh, being uh, from, from, from words, from language, paper, and binding, and of course, siyempre, an author. But God, God, however, he created from nothing. No? And it's not just random things na pinagsama-sama lang niya katulad ng ginawa nung iba sa inyo kanina. He creates with intention. The prophet Isaiah records this declaration of God. Sabi niya, I am the Lord who made all things, who, who alone stretch out the heavens, who spread out the earth by myself. So God didn't use a recipe. He did not took counsel from no one, not, not even from his angels. Kasi he, he, even the angels he created from nothing. Everything we see or we don't see in existence came to be because of him. Rocks, trees, the very air we breathe. Kahit mahirap paniwalaan yung asawa mo, galing kay God yan. Ginawa din niya yan. Not only that, but the, but the intangible realities of life. Like the things that science can't measure. Like, like courage and love and laughter. All these things came from him as well. So all of these things came from the heart of God in the beginning. So unlike doon sa activity natin showing us that we need all these ingredients to make coleslaw or beef stew, when God created the world, paano na ginawa? With nothing. So this is where our story begins tonight. With nothing. Nothing except God. And then came much, much more. No? As obviously, as we all know. In fact, the first four words in the Bible, maybe the, first, the, the most powerful words in all of Scripture. In the beginning, God. Because nothing existed except for Him. So He created the heavens and the earth. We know that. And at that time, the earth had have no shape and darkness covered all of it 
the spirit of God was was just was just hovering over the waters. And then he said, "Let there be light." light. And there was light. And he used this thing that he created to separate light from darkness. God called the light day and he called the darkness night. So there was evening and there was morning and this was the first day. Tapos nagsalita siya ulit, let there be an expanse between the waters to separate them. He, so he made a space no, between the water that was on the earth and the water above the earth and he called this expanse sky. And that's the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into one place and let dry land appear. And so it happened. God called the dry land earth and he called the gathered water sea. So ngayon makikita na natin yung earth is now slowly taking, taking form. And then he said, let the earth make plants and trees with fruits and seeds. So all kinds of plants and trees grew and they bear fruit. And yan yung third day. Next, God placed lights in the sky. The sun to shine during the day and the moon and the, and the stars to shine during the night. God gave these lights to shine on earth to separate us from, from day from night and to help us track time no? in days and years. And this was the fourth day. On the fifth day naman, he made creatures that move and swim in the water. He made birds soar across the sky. God told the animals to multiply and populate the earth. And they, they filled the seas and the sky. And that was the fifth day. And then God made more animals, livestock, creatures that crawl and wildlife to live on the earth. When God said it, it happened. And God saw that it was all good. So we'll stop here for now and talk about Adam and Eve next week, no? Kasi we want to focus muna tonight on how God created all of this. Lahat to. Now to do that, Grace will walk us through every verse na kwinento ko lang sa inyo kanina. The first 25 verses of the Bible as we explore more in depth about how amazing this miracle of creation really is. Okay? Okay. So, now, from my introduction a few weeks back, no, I mentioned ko that inside the Bible are a bunch of stories, diba? and all of these stories are telling one, uh, one big story, okay? And it is a love story. Okay, the Bible tells us that um, tells us what is true about God and about ourselves. Now, all of the stories of the Bible fit together to tell us one big story, and it's about God's love for us. No, tayo, our sins, mga kasalanan natin, and why we are separated from God, which also explains why there is so much um, sadness uh, and death. Okay. And it's also about his um, rescue plan through his son, Jesus. So everything in the Bible is about God. And so is Genesis. Okay? At the center of the stories, we will see glimpses of Jesus. So let's go over the first uh, 25 verses in Genesis um, once again. No? Um, can I ask uh, Tita Bell to read this for us? Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 2. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 2. Thank you, Tita Bell. Okay, so let's go back to the first point na God created everything out of nothing. 
Okay, so the Bible teaches that God created the universe. Everything both visible and invisible. Lahat, no? Everything came out of nothing. And this is sometimes expressed in the Latin phrase, um, ex nihilu, okay? meaning from or out of nothing. So this means that before God created anything, okay, uh, nothing else existed except God himself. Okay, so God alone okay, is eternal. Every created thing was a beginning. Therefore, the, the ex, uh, Grace, Grace the Pita, sorry. <laughs> okay, where did I stop? <laughs> okay, let me go back. Okay, let's go back to the first point na God created everything out of nothing. Okay, the Bible teaches that God created the universe. Everything both visible and invisible. No, everything, lahat. Uh, out of nothing. And this is um, sometimes expressed in the Latin phrase, um, ex nihilo, okay? meaning from or out of nothing. So this means that before God created anything, nothing else existed except God himself. So we can say that God alone is eternal. Every created thing has a beginning. So therefore, the eternal God rules over all of his creation, and he alone is worthy of worship. So because God created out of nothing, uh, must my meaning and purpose on creation. And this points us to the creator. Okay? Each one of us has been created for that specific purpose. Okay, now, um, moving on, uh, let's go, go back to the verse we just read, no? The usual Bible translation says heavens and the earth, uh, just like what Itabel read a while ago. Okay, now in biblical Hebrew, the word for heaven okay, simply refers to the sky. Um, and the word earth um, means land, okay, the ground below us, not the globe, huh? it's just you know, earth, the ground. Now this line is summarizing what's going to happen in the next part of the verse. Okay, it says, the earth was formless and empty. So in Hebrew, um, there's this phrase, um, tohu vabohu, okay, uh, which means unordered and uninhabited. So this is the ancient way of talking about the pre-creation state, uh, what we call nothingness. Okay, and then the next line uses another image to say the same thing. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. Um, another word would, would be an abyss, okay? Again, this is a common way, okay, for the ancients to describe the non-reality that preceded creation. And then the next line, no, it is um, interesting. It says, and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. The Hebrew word for God's spirit is ruach. Okay, which refers to wind or breath or um, God's invisible presence. So you can't see it, okay? but God is present in the darkness, ready to bring order so that life can flourish. God intentionally begins his creation by making a dark, empty mess. And this is significant. Why? Because by starting with chaos and darkness, God gives us a template you know, for how he works in the world. Yes, he's powerful enough to create in an instant, that's for sure. You know? Pero more often than not, he uses a process. And process brings order. And this happens in a series of six days. You know? Each day begins with the phrase, and God said, and then ends with the phrase, and there was evening and morning. Every day addresses these problems introduced in verse 2, okay? that there's no order and no inhabitants. Okay, so um, let's read verses 3 to 13. Uh, I would like to ask Joel um, to read them for us. It is a bit long, huh? <laughs> so go, Joel. 
And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And there was evening. And there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. And God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together, he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind on the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. Okay, thank you, Joel. So, the first order begins with the light on day one. Okay, let there be light. Now, this is God's own glorious light that fills and contains the darkness as he separates day from night. Okay. Here, no, um, God is establishing the order of time. Okay. Day two, let there be an expanse between the waters to separate water from water. So what is this expanse? Okay, so let's go back to the ancient culture again. Okay. We have to always go back to how the ancients were talking because Genesis was written um, in the ancient world to an ancient audience. Okay. So during the ancient times, they think of the sky as a solid dome that holds back water. Okay, they call it a vault. Kasi dyan galing ang ulan, di ba? So here on the second day, God is splitting the waters in half. Okay, the above and the below, okay, which creates the sky and the seas. Day three. Let the water under the sky be gathered to one place and let dry ground appear. So here, God is establishing the realm of the land. And it emerges out of the waters. And then there's a bonus. Meron, bo meron pa bonus sa third day, no? God invites plants and fruit trees with seed to come out of the land. So now we have time, okay, the sky and the seas, and the land. So makita na natin that there is order na. Okay? Meron na order. So it's now time to go back and fill up these realms that are mentioned on days one to three with what? Inhabitants. Okay? And this is what happens in days four, uh, days four through six. So let's read verses 14 to 25. So, um, can I ask Don to read um, verses 14 to 19? Then I'll read the rest. Okay. Okay. And God said, Let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years. And let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth, and it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day 
and the lesser light to, go to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the, of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves, with which the waters swarm according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning uh, in the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds livestock and creeping things and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds and the livestock according to their kinds and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Day four, let there be lights in the expanse of the sky. So God installs these lights, you know, the sun, moon, and stars as signs and symbols that reflect God's own light to separate day and night, to create seasons and weather and the concept of time. Then on day five, let the waters swarm with living creatures and let birds fly above the earth. These are the creatures that live in the waters below and those that fly near the waters above. Then finally, on day six, let the land produce living creatures. So they came out, you know, they came up out of the ground to live on the land. Now, over and over, God says that what he created was good. The author of Genesis 1 doesn't want us to see the greatness of God's creation. He wants us to see the goodness of it. Okay? The goodness of creation is really um, just an overflow of God's goodness because he made it. And we see that in the phrase repeated throughout Genesis 1, uh, which says God saw that it was good. He is intimately involved with his creation always seeing what happens in his world and never dismissing it. God repeatedly affirmed that all of his creation was good. And it was good, no? And it is good in God's judgment because he created it for a purpose that is fulfilled, which is to reflect and display the good character of the creator. So, what does this story teach us about God? When God created everything, he made it, um, he made it out of nothing. Okay? Um, if you think about it, isn't that incredible? No. God didn't start with some materials no, and added glue or form something that already existed into something new. Um, nothing else existed that time. What did he do? He spoke. No? Nagsalita lang siya. He spoke and it happened. Okay? In this story, okay, we see God's authority. His power to give orders, make decisions, and control things. So as creator and king, God has authority over everything. And because of this, um, my meaning and purpose on creation, and it points us to the creator. So what was special about everything God created? God saw that all of it was good. God created everything and everything he created was good. 
um, everything God created was exactly how God intended it to be. Everything God made, no, brings in glory. Now, remember what we said uh, a while ago, uh, that in every story, we will see glimpses of uh, Jesus. Okay, So um, let's turn to the book of John in the New Testament, chapters 1, uh, verse 1 to 4. Um, this one, I will ask uh, Rian to read it to us. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him, all the things were made. Without Him, nothing was made that was been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. Thank you, Rian. So the Bible says that the Word was with God in the beginning, and the Word was God. So all things were created through him. The word here, okay, the word no, uh, that was mentioned a verse, this is God the Son. Okay? So when God spoke things into existence, the Son was already there. Okay? Jesus is Lord over all creation. Shall see God the Son, and God the Son has always existed. Okay? The Bible says everything was created by him and for him. And he holds everything together. So how should um, tonight's story impact us? No? And what do we do? What applications can we come up with um, from these stories? Okay, first, okay, creation was designed to point us to the greatness of God. And also to bring out worship towards him from our hearts and from our lives. We recognize that God is all powerful and that the world was just created by God, you know. And what a world it is. Intricate designs, just like snowflakes. Okay, each snowflake has a different pattern um, from the other. Or if you look at the blade of a grass under a microscope, it doesn't have the same patterns as well. The world we live in is a marvelous place of wonder and beauty. So if the creation is this amazing, okay, all the more must amazing and creator. So just like a beautiful painting admired by everyone, everybody will be saying or everybody would ask, sino ang painter? Okay? So we ang ganda, ang ganda ng painting, ang galing. So likewise, you know, that will be how we react. Okay? Ang ganda ng cone ng Mount Mayon. You know, perfect cone. Sinong gumawa nito? Si God. You know? Wow, ang galing ni God. You know? And from our reaction, wonder and awe you know, comes out from our hearts for our amazing God that we can't help but to worship Him. Next, no, it is important that we know that God created everything out of nothing. But it also matters that we see how, no, it's the how God created everything. When God created everything, he did it by starting uh, with a formless void and then shaping it with his word. In the same way, our lives are formless and void until God's word comes in to bring life and peace, um, beauty, and order. Next, God is a God of order. Okay? God not only created all things, but he also maintains the entire universe. He holds it all together, you know, knowing this should give us hope. If he holds the universe together, for sure, no, he can hold our lives together. Whenever, um, whenever we are tempted to give up hope, okay, to feel like uh, we can't hold it together anymore, as if the world is spinning out of control, we should remember that God is God. 
he, he holds everything together um, by the power of who he is. Lastly, God created everything good. Not only did God create everything, but God created everything good. So when God created something and called it good, ibig sabihin, okay, it was doing well at performing its intended purpose and design. So what is this purpose? It is to declare, to tell of the glory of God, to display plainly his power and his divine nature. And since we are also God's creation, we should live our lives by being obedient to his will. Because by doing this, no, we declare his glory. So here's a food for thought before we end. No? Our lives these days may be a picture of chaos. But if God can create everything good out of nothing, he can surely recreate everything in us. Of this we can be sure of, and this is priceless. I want to end us with the passage, Colossians. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things and in him hold, all things hold together. Creation has always been about Jesus, not us. It has only ever been about Jesus. He is the center of all of it. Sabi dito sa Bible, He is the Word with God in the beginning. Speaking galaxies into existence. And He will be at the center of all of it when all, all of it is said and done. And since Jesus is the center, the Lord, and the goal of all of creation, it only follows that our lives works best when he is in control of it. Tama ba? So we end this first big chapter of the Bible saying that all of God's creation testifies to the greatness of our God. Pero alam din natin na yung next big chapter of the story, the fall of humanity, is coming. We know that partly because we are still living in it today, right now. Creation as we see it today is not what it was meant to be or, or kahit tayo. We are sinners who put so many things other than God on the throne of our hearts. Thankfully, the story will not end with the fall of man. Kasi God's plan involves redemption and Restoration, both of which is accomplished through Jesus Christ. So if you join us in the next weeks and months, we are going to be working and studying this together, story by story, piecing it all together. The story of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay? God of creation There at the start Before the beginning of time No point of reference Spoke to the dark And fleshed out the wonder of life And as you speak 
down my heart through all of my failure and pride on a hill you created the light of the world abandoned in darkness to die and as you speak
Well, magical.